So there was an old tweet that I stumbled upon this weekend from Dreamcast Guy that got me thinking, should Nintendo port their games to the PC? Interesting question, right? Well, let's talk about it just a little. So with the news of Sony first party games like God of War, Spider-Man, and Uncharted being ported to PC, some creators, internet personality, and even gamers have been advocating for Nintendo to follow suit and begin porting their franchises to PC. And I thought I would tackle this topic with my limited experience and opinion and, you know, see what you guys thought. This should definitely make for a fun one at the very least. So I thought we'd start the discussion off with the Sony side first. Let's ask ourselves, does it make any sense for Sony to port their games to PC? Mm, I may not agree with the notion, but looking at everything in scope, I wouldn't say it doesn't make sense for them. Sony has never really fully developed their brand identity with their franchises, and what I mean by that is they don't really have mascot characters. This is of course arguable, some people may say Ratchet, some may say Kratos, and some even say Crash Bandicoot, but it's debatable nonetheless. So I don't think they are really taking a hit to their, to their brand identity. That is to say, PlayStation as a brand, if they port their games to PC. Also, financially speaking, Sony games do have huge bloating budgets and cost a lot of money to make. You can tell this from the graphical fidelity and just overall quality of their first party games alone. So let me ask, if a game costs, I don't know, 100 to 200 million to make and sells, let's say, 45 million copies in its launch window, how's the return on profits? And let's say that the game sold 10 million copies over its lifetime. You also have to take into account the price in which the game sold and all of the costs that come with creating and shipping out game discs, uh, distribution, marketing, etc., which is actually rarely talked about in the gaming industry for some odd reason. Companies don't get 100% of sales profits. Speaking of which, let me go into sales just a little bit more. Let's say, I don't know, God of War Ragnarok went on sale after like five months on the market and dropped its price by 20 to 50%. In this industry, that reduced price sale counts as a regular game sale. It's not broken down like how you may see in the streaming music industry. One sale is one sale. Sony and Xbox are known to lower their prices of their products quite quickly in comparison to Nintendo, usually due to a slowdown in sales, a general loss of interest, overshipping copies, or consumers simply waiting for that aforementioned price drop. There's nothing wrong with this, it's just how the industry works. Now considering these factors altogether, huge budgets, decent to good sales, and quick price cuts, I would say yeah, it makes sense financially for Sony to port their games to PC, but I'll submit to you an argument. I still don't think the long-term damage outweighs the short-term gains, as I believe a push to PC may cause less overall people to purchase that console. However, that has yet to be seen. I could be completely wrong on this. Sony still hasn't dedicated day and date to PC, so they may be fine for all I know, and looking at the current sales trajectory of the PS5, they seem to be doing pretty okay. So then, with all of that being said, let's examine Nintendo's situation a little bit. Unlike Sony, Nintendo is a video game company first. Their video game IPs define them and their company, and they value their Nintendo franchises above anything else. See, without Mario, Zelda, Xenoblade, etc., there is no Nintendo, at least not as we know it now. This is unlike Sony, which if they lost their video game division, they may not be doing as well because I believe their video game division is their most profitable division, but they still have TVs, phones, movies, music, and more. Nintendo's main source of income comes in its software sales. Software sales tied to their own hardware. Think about it. If they release their games on Steam, why would anyone buy their hardware? Their hardware is already behind the competition and specs, and one of the major factors people buy Nintendo hardware for is for Nintendo games. Also, who wants to be the fool that can play a game at 4K 60fps and then decides to buy the 960p 30fps version for the same price at that? How is someone going to justify that? Especially now when the Steam Deck is out, why wouldn't they just buy all of the Nintendo games on their Steam Deck? It makes even less sense to port games as Steam Deck is out and it would be a direct competitor to the Switch. Also, just like Sony and Xbox, Nintendo leverages their hardware to third-party developers who put games on their system in which Nintendo gets a cut on. 
We already know how tough it is for third party developers to work on Nintendo platforms in the first place. So then why would Nintendo risk losing their customers to PC when the user base is the only incentive for third party developers to stick around in the first place? It's obviously in Nintendo's best interest to sell more hardware by releasing sought after software on that hardware, right? But that's not just it. There's also a few more interesting things why Nintendo wouldn't be interested in porting their games very often. One of these is the board of directors and investors inside or associated with Nintendo. You see, Nintendo is publicly traded, just like Sony and Microsoft. But instead of all of Nintendo being available for purchase, the originating family of Nintendo owns a large amount of its stock, as well as Nintendo itself owning a large portion. This almost guarantees that the business and its future will come first and the money following closely behind. And I mean very closely. This is plainly evident as even at its all time low with the Wii U and investors insisting on porting games, Nintendo instead continue to innovate, evolve and focus on software and hardware until they develop the Switch and after it launched, well, <laughs> the rest is history. And what about physical media, guys? Sony and Xbox are now making a huge push towards digital games and renting games via streaming services. And Nintendo seems to be the only company that still has their foot in the door for physical games and getting games into the hand of gamers. I, for one, do not think going fully digital is a good idea and will be presenting my argument in a later video. I, for one, appreciate Nintendo being really the last bastion of hope on the physical gaming side, at least for now. Though, who knows what the future may hold. Last but not least, we need to talk about Nintendo's finances. Look, <laughs> Nintendo is fine financially. Actually, even better than fine. In 2014, Nintendo had enough liquid cash to run the company in a deficit for 38 years straight. And imagine how much they have now considering the monstrous success of the Switch. Again, another example of Nintendo valuing the company and the brand itself enough to prepare for a rainy day, or uh, like rainy years, I guess. Nintendo innovates. They like to experiment. They like to try new things and see what sticks. So they've prepared themselves enough for a failure or two. Listen, Nintendo came out of the door with a game plan and it worked wonders. You can only play Nintendo games on Nintendo systems and after marketing like this for over three decades, I, I just can't see it in their best interest to make a change to this. Why fix what's not broken? Why chase the possible short-term higher profits when you're doing just fine? And most importantly, why take the chance to leave your loyal customer base disappointed? No, I don't think Nintendo should port their games to PC. It just doesn't make any sense. Well, that's it. What do you guys think? How would you feel if Nintendo officially began to port their games to PC? Would you be okay with it? Would you be worried? Let me know in the comment section below and listen, I'm fully aware of emulation, but I didn't think that super relevant to my argument, so I kind of just skipped it. Maybe I'll touch on emulation in a future video. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing so we can continue to grow together. You're all awesome. This has been Jeff with Nintendo Vault and hey, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.